I would love to tell you that I knew from the time I was 12 I was going to open my own restaurant, but I stumbled into food and cooking. Rebecca Solnit, who's an amazing writer, says that trying to decide where a story begins is like dipping a cup of water in the ocean, so I don't really know exactly where to tell my story. <laughs> March 15th, 1982 is when we opened, so we're coming up on our 40th anniversary. Uh, we had two employees, 1,300 square feet, 29 seats, 25 sandwiches, and a little bit of uh, what's now called specialty food, but at the time was mostly just considered strange. If I would tell a customer we had extra virgin olive oil, they would kind of go, extra virgin, what's that? From the beginning, we had much more than just Jewish food, much to my mother's chagrin. We had prosciutto and bacon and ham hocks because we were in the uh, old African-American neighborhood. So we were never a kosher deli uh, and never aspired to be. The founders of the Delicatessen were trying to figure out how to grow the organization. They decided on this really novel approach, which was to find people who were passionate about a particular food element and to help them develop their own business. And 60% of all the transactions that happened at the deli involved bread. So they thought, let's make better bread. A couple of years in, they said, why don't you make the sweet things that we make at the deli? I'm like, why? We're bread bakers. We don't want to make sweet things. Why do you need us to do that? It was this tiny little place. And they had to decide, are we going to make the corned beef? Or are we gonna make the brownies or the arugula or the coffee cake? Well, the corned beef always won out. And now uh, we make Mandelbrot, sour cream coffee cake, lots of different cheesecakes. And one of my favorites is that we make strudels. We're also sort of, I'd say kind of like a nerdy food business. There's a lot of writing going on about the history of food, about business in a more philosophical way. And I think it's supported by the fact that we have this university here and many people in the university who are interested in engaging at that level. I came to Ann Arbor to go to school at the University of Michigan where I studied Russian history and anarchism. I would say the completely inaccurate belief of the public is that anarchism is about tearing everything down. Anarchism is actually a belief system. It's very much about poetry, beauty, good food. It's how I treat you, it's how I treat myself, it's how I treat everybody we work with, and it's really based on a positive belief in human beings. Getting out of hierarchical thinking, self-organizing work teams, employee engagement, purpose, I believe that those that help those around them the most will ultimately do the best. And I don't mean necessarily make the most money because that's not the driving force, but in terms of living a meaningful life that matters uh, to you and the people around you and the planet.